this is how you do this problem. This is how you're going to fill in the blanks. So there's your bracket term column, it's SS, sum of squares, DF, degrees of freedom, M, S, M, a mean squares, and then F is the final ratio. But uh, I suggest that you you familiar, familiarize yourself a lot with the original source of variance table. Let me pull it up real quick here. <laughs> Uh, where is it? This must be it. Bam. There it is. So this also shows you how to do the bracket terms, but uh, in this problem, I've already given you values, some of the values for sum of squares, degrees of freedom, mean squares, etc., etc. So you got to fill in this side of the blank. So let's get started. Now, the mean squares, according to our... ANOVA table, right, the mean squares is the sum of squares, sum of squares, divided by the degrees of freedom, degrees of freedom. That's how you get this column. You take the sum of squares column, divided by the degrees of freedom column, and that gives you your mean squares column. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Uh-oh, we got some number divided by 2 equals 329. Sounds like an algebra problem. X divided by 2 equals 329. So what I'm going to do is break up my calculator. And I'm going to multiply 329 times 2. And that should give me my, yeah, there it is, 658. So that is our sum of squares. Hold on. So that takes care of that empty box. This empty box, uh-oh, there's no mean squares. Ah. But the degrees of freedom column, 2 plus some number equals 29, right? 2 plus whatever this number is equals 29. Uh, it's kind of a no-brainer. It's 27. Please hold. So now we have the degrees of freedom. So now we're going to take this sum of squares within groups, divide it by the degrees of freedom within groups, and we're going to get... Is that a number? Six four nine zero divided by twenty seven equals two four zero point four two four zero point four two four zero point four. Please hold. That wasn't so bad. So your final F ratio is the that's why they call it a ratio. It is the ratio of the mean squares of your between group variance. That's your numerator, and your denominator is your within group variance. So our F final F ratio, our F score is going to be 329 divided by 240.4. You have my permission to round to the whole, to the nearest whole number. Usually these decimals really don't make a big deal, so. But our F score looks like roughly 1.37. Please hold. And that's about it. But that's a very small F value. Uh, usually your F has to be bigger than like 3 or 4 in this kind of thing, in, in this kind of uh, basic one-way ANOVA, before you can get a significance that's less than 0.05. But I'm going to look it up real quick. I'm going to show you how to look up this. F score. This is your calculated F, 1.37. You calculated it. So now we're going to compare it to the critical F in the table. So please hold. I'm going to open up one of the F charts. Click O. Please hold. So here's the F table. So how do you look up something in an F table? Good question. First of all, depending on which table you're using, we always use alpha as 0.05 unless otherwise stated. So these first couple of pages are an alpha of 0.10. Here's a 0.05. So now how you look up a critical F is you go back to your page here, your, uh, your ANOVA table, and you look at the degrees of freedom between group 2 and your degrees of freedom within group 27. So we're going to be looking up the F value, the critical F value, at 2, 27. 
So the, the 2 is your top number up here. Okay. So we're looking at 2. So we've got to scroll down in this row until we hit 27. And there it is right there. Bam. So 3.35 is your critical F value. So if this number was greater than 3.35, you would have had a significant p-value. Okay, You would have a p-value less than 0.05. That would have allowed you to reject the null hypothesis and state that, yes, there was a significant difference between these groups and whatever you're measuring. But that's it. MGZ.